Mr. President, what will be your message on Iran? We have a lot of time. There's no rush. They can take their time. Uh, there's absolutely no time pressure. Um, I think that uh, in the end, hopefully it's going to work out. If it does, great. And if it doesn't, you'll be hearing about it. That's President Trump sounding off on Iran during the G20 summit as the longest Senate vote in history is now underway with lawmakers considering an amendment to a defense bill barring the president from ordering military strikes without congressional authorization. Let's bring in Michael Anton. He's a former national security spokesperson for President Trump. Michael, good of you to join us this morning. This vote really doesn't stand a chance of passing in the Senate. I guess this is really kind of meant to just get the Democrats want to get the Republicans on record. Is that a fair assessment? Though it's kind of messing up their 4th of July recess. It's a fair assessment. Look, I would say the only thing that's been contemplated so far is a potential American response to Iranian provocation. Um, the president isn't looking for a fight here. He's not spoiling for a fight. Uh, Iran continues to harass shipping in the Gulf. They threaten American interests. They threaten American allies. They do so in kind of a low-grade way because they don't want to escalate things to a point where they provoke a massive American response because they know they can't deal with the massive American response. And so far, the president's been very measured in response, right. I think rightly so. We saw he himself said he called off a potential response because he thought it was disproportionate. He doesn't want to escalate this crisis. And as you just heard him say, he thinks we have plenty of time. We've sanctioned Iran. We got out of the Iran deal, which gave Iran resources yeah. to spread chaos. And I think they're feeling the fiscal pinch, which is, which is helpful in the long term. Yeah, but when you talk about this War Authorization Act that was passed after 9-11, Michael, it's kind of interesting because the Pentagon says that this whole vote thing in the Senate right now, the Pentagon's against this because they want the, the right. You know, they think it's imperative just for, not for a full-on war, but for initial strikes to be able to have the element of surprise. Well, look, this is the question, right? What, what uh, constitutionally, this will be a constitutional question. I think if the Iranians strike first in a very serious way, I think the constitutional issue is very clear that the president has the right to respond. That, that's in his prerogative. If it's a question of the United States going first, of doing something without uh, an initial provocation, it gets a lot murkier there. I would be one who would say that the 2001 authorization of military force against Al Qaeda, specifically in response to 9-11, it's hard for me to see how that would cover the United States striking first against Iran. Yeah, it's fascinating. Can you look over at the G27 and Trump's kind of over there gauging support for maybe more punishing for more of, uh, you know, punishing, possibly increasing sanctions against Iran. It doesn't seem like America's allies in Europe are, are totally on board with that. What do you mean? No, Amer America's allies in Europe very much want to do business with Iran. They yeah. want to make money. Uh, doing co commercial contracts with Iran, but they also want to stay on our good side, and there's a tension there. We don't want them to do it. Um, we threaten to cut them out of the U.S. banking system, which is a very severe problem for them if they do it. Right. Um, but we have other allies in the region, particularly in the Gulf and the Arab states, that consider Iran rightly an enemy. Uh, and they're very concerned about Iranian ambitions yeah. in the Gulf and in some of their states and with their minority populations. And they're looking to us to lead to keep the pressure on Iran. So we have a bit yeah. of a split with our allies. The Europeans want us to go slow and play it cool. And some in the Gulf want us to turn up the heat a bit. And that's a difficult problem to manage, but it's manageable. Michael, I want you to listen to the, the Democratic candidates last night talking about foreign policy during the debate and then get your response. Watch. President Trump is hell-bent on starting a war with Iran. My first act wow. will be to engage Iran to stabilize the Middle East. Russia is our greatest geopolitical threat because they've been hacking our democracy successfully. And they've been laughing their asses off about it for the last couple of years. My like first the last call word. is to Prime Minister of New Zealand, who said that her goal is to make New Zealand the place where it's the best place in the world for a child to grow up. And I will tell her girlfriend you are so on. Quickly, despite that montage, they didn't really talk a lot about foreign policy, which is kind of surprising what's going on in Iran. What, what's your thoughts on that, quickly, Michael? Well, I mean, I, from what I heard, so the idea that the president wants war with Iran, I think that's preposterous. Mm -hmm. I think he's gone out of his way to avoid it, even in the face of, as I say, low-grade, but still consistent Iranian provocations. The idea that Russia is our greatest geopolitical threat, I think, is also preposterous. It's pretty obvious that China is and has been for some time America's greatest geopolitical threat. And President Trump is the first president to address this point seriously and really take action. So yep. it seems to me they're not they, they're not talking a lot about foreign policy because I think they know they're not on particularly strong ground that his policy has been successful. And, and he also hasn't played into yep. the stereotypes yep. that they Michael, want to stick got, with him. We got to go. Michael Anton. Good. To you, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we are waiting a court here.